To the Nature Journal Connection. I'm your host, John Muir Laws. Today, we're going to be exploring how to create a diagram in your own Nature Journal. A diagram is a simplified drawing of a complex subject. It's a skill that you're going to find you reach for again and again to clearly explain and explore information in your own Nature Journal. Let's take a look. This is a really cool tree. It's a Monterey Cypress, and it's growing here at the edge of the Pacific Ocean on really sandy soil. Its structure is absolutely fascinating. Right here, I have a massive central trunk. This is more than five meters around. So a huge, huge base of this tree. But look at how far it goes. You can see the top of the tree right there. You see sunlight above this tree. That's the top of the tree. So huge trunk only goes up that high. But what this tree is doing is it's nestled down here next to a big sand dune, and it's sending out branches that curve out, come down to the ground, and look at what happens when, that does, when they do. So here's this branch, it's coming down, 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 forks right here, and then goes from this skinny little part here, maybe this big around, and roots into the ground right here. Right here, I can see roots coming out from this branch going back into the soil, and look what pops up on the other side. It's another big, thick tree trunk. So big trunk to skinny branch that then sends an extension of this tree out here to re-root, and so this tree has a whole ring of, of little sub-trees that it's made around the outside edge. That's really cool. That's an amazing structure. But if I were to make a sketch to show all of this stuff going on, I could very easily get lost in the details. And that's where making a diagram comes in. A diagram is where I observe certain details, I want to show those, I'm going to intentionally leave out a whole bunch of information in this sketch. What I want to do is just sort of show the critical big ideas. So I'm going to want to get the big central trunk, branches come down, re-root, come up as secondary trees. The whole thing is not very high. It's nestled against a little uh, sand dune here. I can get all of that information in a little diagram. I find the way that these roots come out of this branch, drop down into the soil, and then emerge with, with, with thicker branches is so interesting. I'm going to make a separate little diagram to show this detail of uh, how one of these branches is rooting into the sandy soil of this hillside. When I climbed up to the top of this tree, I thought that what I would find is that the top had been broken off in some windstorm, and there'd be a jagged end up here. But that's not what I see. Up here in the canopy, this tree's branches are just folded back and forth on top of one another, making this strange treetop platform. So this is not at all what I expected to see. Now, when there is a surprise like this in nature for me, I always get those sorts of surprises into my nature journal. Anytime you're surprised by what you see, realize that what you expected to find in nature is different than reality. Those are the things where we want to really take note. So I'm going to make a simplified diagram of this. Making a portrait of it, a careful drawing of it, that might be difficult to do. But I can simplify this structure up here and get those notes into my journal. Whoa, sorry everybody, I just got a little bit distracted here. I was drawing some trees and I heard <laughs> peregrine falcon. And so went running out onto the dunes here, saw a peregrine falcon attacking a red-tailed hawk, ravens attacking a peregrine falcon, peregrine falcon attacking ravens, and now the peregrine falcon eating a pigeon. 
I gotta just jot some notes down really quickly about this and uh, we'll go back to diagramming trees in just a moment. Let's take a look at a few techniques that you can use to enhance your diagrams. We've seen a few of these before. If you're showing something about changes in time, making little cartoon panels is really, really effective. So in scene one, it's over here and is this big. And in scene number two, it's grown and it's over here. All right. So that is a way of showing changed through time. It's also just a very simplified side view. So just doing a straight on side view, like you see here in the frog, I'm not having to deal with complex, um, so three dimensional images. So just that, that straight side view makes things a little bit easier. Another thing that you can use is, we've talked about this before, we can use maps as diagrams. So I can chart out the locations of certain sorts of things. And if I'm looking at sort of uh, interesting things and patterns in space, let's say this is where the elk were feeding on day one. And on day two, they were up in here. See how easily I can record these changes in spatial information. Then uh, when the wolves came by, they all moved down here. There's day three. So <clears throat> I can record also lots of information with a simple diagram using more of a map format. Another tool that's very useful in making diagrams is an arrow. It's said that a, uh, an arrow is a diagram's best friend. And look at this. This is kind of a fun arrow style. It's a ribbon arrow. And I can make it straight, or this one I put a big curve in it. So the other side of this curve is here, and it's curving around here. And that curve would then come out somewhere around here. You get this sense of this ribbon curling through space. I can show that I can show that things are splitting up. If I have my arrows come this way, that suggests that there are either something that is moving and has split up. You can also use arrows to show here I'm going to draw these two converging into a bigger path. Kind of tuck it in underneath that one. So here's this arrow suggesting things coming together. Now, what I'm showing with arrows can be forces, unseen forces. It can be wind. You could be suggesting sort of where energy is, is, is flowing in a system. So sometimes I'll often use arrows just to sort of show suggestions of forces that you may not be able to see, you may not be able to see it going over here. So it can be movement of something, or it can also be forces in your diagram. You can also, with a single drawing, 
let's say this little frog here is puffing out its vocal sac. All right. I can show stage one and stage two. And with this vocal sac, and look at this, I'm going to draw a two way arrow here, suggesting that as this little frog is chirping, it's inflating and deflating the vocal sac. It's also fun to notice <clears throat> just how having a second color in here, so this is mostly one brown pencil, and then I've just got this red brown pencil, and look at how the detail that I want you to notice really pops out. You really notice these groups of these elk in here. So that's just a simple one color change, and I can add, give some characteristic of my diagram a lot more emphasis. So I've got several tricks going on, just thinking about simple side views as a way of simplifying um, a, a, a drawing. I can have drawings done in stages or I can have a single drawing animated with different positions um, on that. You can use arrows to show movement. You can use arrows to show forces that you may be able to, you may not be able to see. And finally, maps are another great strategy. We can make a simplified diagram, and you can then have showing those how things are moving. Through time and space. Strategies for you to play with in your own diagrams. Check out the structure on that tree. It's got a trunk coming into the top of the edge of this dune, and then it's way cantilevered out in this direction. I'm gonna make a quick diagram of this. One of the advantages of diagramming is that it's a lot faster than making a careful drawing or a portrait of something. And that's important right now because it's starting to rain. So I'm gonna see if I can make a diagram of this before my page gets wet. The largest branches from this Monterey pine are wrapping from the main trunk back in this direction. And they're resting up here on top of the cliff face. So this is a really different arrangement than what we're seeing in the Monterey cypress. And it's really fun to be able to, to make some diagrams, compare the ways that these true trees are, are interacting with the environment around them. Hey, I'm now at the canopy of this Monterey pine tree. So from way up here, I'm actually not worried about falling. And the reason is that at this edge of the tree, the branches come, check this out, right down to ground level. Ha. That's a really neat structure but is able to record that information in the diagrams that I've been making. Your nature journaling challenge for this week is to create your own diagram in your journal. Start by finding a phenomenon or an object that captures your interest and attention, and then use words, pictures, and numbers to document it in your journal. But remember, we're making a diagram. So instead of drawing in every little detail we see, 
we're going to look for those features and characteristics that we think are the most important or interesting or the most useful for understanding what's going on here. You're going to emphasize those. You're also going to leave other things out. You don't have to include everything in your diagram. And if you do, it becomes more confusing. So you can help people see and understand what you see and understand by deliberately choosing what goes in and what is left on the cutting room floor. I think you're going to find that keeping diagrams like this in your nature journal becomes a regular part of your own journaling practice. And until next time, this is your Nature Journal Connection. Doo -doo -doo.